We're glad to know you're still there. Uh, like we said, it's always a very, very, very exciting thing to wake up every morning and know that you have a special day because uh, that's the only day uh, of that nature you will see in your lifetime and you've not seen it before. Today, uh, and like every other 6th of February, is uh, Safer Internet Day. And it takes place on February 6th, like I said, and each year to raise awareness of safer and better internet for all, especially for children and young people. It doesn't matter that it has been uh, designated like young and uh, 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 children and young people. Everybody is involved because the parents that have these children are involved. The educators, the, uh, the, even the pastors, the imams and everybody, uh, everybody is involved. But to throw more light on what this is all about and everything that has to go around this, I have joining me here, or joining us here this uh, morning, Victor Teremba. is a development practitioner and change leader with Nguvu Collective. Good morning and welcome to the program, Victor. Yeah, good morning and uh, thank you for having me. Good yeah. morning. This morning. Yes. Yeah. For his day... For a day to be set aside uh, to celebrate something or to create awareness over something, it must be very, very important. Uh, walk us through why uh, Safer Internet uh, Day is important to have this day for celebration or for remembrance. Uh, yeah, okay, so um, if, you, if you basically think about it, since the work on the internet became mainstream, became a recent global uh, what kind of phenomenon you've 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 seen that uh, the open internet has been uh, an instrument that has connected the rest of the world together, and so by this it has mean that the world has become a global village by the share uh, virtue that we have the internet with us, and uh, just like every community where you now have like a community, there has to be that uh, safety within within that community. They are, they are, there um, has to be like a safe environment for people of that community to be able to um, live safely in that particular work kind of community. So, so that is why the, in the Safer Internet Day is actually set aside to remind, uh, basically for us to even celebrate the uh, work on uh, the technology of internet. And then second to also remind us that why it has brought the rest of the world, why it has brought us together, we need to always remember that we have to make it safe for us, make it safe for other people, uh, you know, just like we live in our normal communities and societies. And so that is what the safer internet is about, you know, about seeing how people can then use the internet more responsibly. People are safer using the internet and people are more um, comfortable and convenient using the internet. Okay, um, so we're talking about how to make the internet safer, obviously, but then there are quite some challenges. Um, for instance, people get bullied on the internet. Um, there's also the, the other one, which is, you know, fake news. A lot of people spread fake news on the internet. So how do we start to mitigate, you know, all of this? How does Safer Internet Day help us to ensure that you're not getting harassed, you're not getting bullied, um, fake news is not being, you know, propagated on the internet? Yeah, <clears throat> so um, how do we ensure that we have a safer internet community? Yeah. And you see, so this responsibility lies basically uh, on both the government and the citizen. But I also feel that it's more particularly on the part of we, the citizens and individuals, than the government, because the government responsibility, more or less, lies in work on a corrective or punitive measures. But then in terms of preventing it even from happening, it means that for we citizens, we need to realize uh, that we have to use the internet safely. I mean, use the internet more res more responsibly so that it is uh, safer for us and for other people using it. And it is just the same principles that applies to like, you know, work on a fundamental human rights. Um, so you don't have to, everybody has a right to do this and so you don't have the right to impede other people from using it and so that is the same thing with the um, internet and just like you work my rightly mentioned since we have the internet you know there are been some other uh, what we call um uh some some unsafe or unethical use of social media so in case like you mentioned work on cyber bullying you see fake news of what you kind of, uh, or what you call cover uh, this no kind of fake news generally, and then you see how people have become, um, you know, people are being stalked online, and then from online you then, um, and uh, then they get um, harmed, 
you know, off the internet, people get scammed um, every day. And so the idea would be so if for instance in the case of internet scamming, so sometimes how do people even get to scam other people? You know, apart from the fact that they create phishing website, other people are just so careless about uh, putting out their information, their data so much outside of the internet that people are able to uh, harvest this uh, uh, information and then they use it for other nefarious activities and then also in the case of cyberbullying for instance i mean what do we um, have to stop people online and then bully them online because we think that we are anonymous and so, so there's that um, act of using internet responsibly on our part and so why why we cannot just speak for everybody but then you have to now look at yourself as an individual that how do i want to use this internet and so why some people stay online and then all they do on the internet or what they all they do is to spread you know fake news or mm. you know, um, look for data on how to scam other people defraud other people other people use the internet specifically to gain more skills and knowledge to for self development, so some people attend um, use the work on the internet for courses. They use it to learn new skills that they better themselves, they further develop themselves as, as an work on an individual. That is a responsible use of social media. Sometimes people just go there to go and cool off, you know, um, read read and listen people's banter, comments, what's happening on the uh, net, and then realize that is responsible use of that internet. And so people also care for about the kind of information that they put out also responsible use of internet so you can make yourself you can decide to be a citizen that does that and then on the part of the government so you know government will always try to find ways to ensure that the internet become more responsible for people and that is why in nigeria at the point we had uh, or even even so currently we had the work on a cyber crime act also you know to basically protect innocent citizens and also caution others who might want to take that part that there is a law that can actually punish you and then that law also protects other innocent people from um, criminal activities or yes or the illicit kind of internet okay so you talked about scam for instance how can you start to you know just ensure that you're not being scammed so i know there is the whole um two-factor authentic authentication if i'm not mistaken um you know just ways yeah. that you can protect yourself because now we're talking about safer internet so if you're going to be using the internet you have to find a way to make sure that it's safe for you and i'm just bringing this up just to write off what you have said so how do you you know ensure are can you highlight some some things that people can do um, some factors to put in place to ensure that you are being safe on the internet so um, so some uh, these factors basically some uh, steps or maybe some other factors that you can use to ensure that you're actually safe on the internet is uh, sometimes also the cast you you also have to be careful about the kind of uh, information or uh, online products that you actually consume and um, in um, the internet, there is uh, a secured, so for instance, website, for, for instance, there are some that are secured and there are others that are not secured. And um, usually when you open a, this a particular website, at the beginning, if you find like a, something like a padlock, an icon, a mm. padlock icon, it shows that that particular website is actually protected. And then it's also, so those kind of websites sometimes, yes, that it's not a guarantee, but those are actually safer websites, you know, you can, uh, use most of the time and then you always have to be very conscious because uh, some criminal elements that you know use this kind of uh, that use the internet they are also very creative creative in, 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 in other ways to ensure that sometimes they replicate a particular website in a way that you cannot if you're unsuspecting you cannot quickly identify that this is a fake so you need to if it's if for instance you are visiting a site that you're unfamiliar with you need to be very um, careful you need to be very in saying that this website is actually uh, safe for you to use. And secondly, you can't put out your information. Uh, any website that asks you, any platform whatsoever that asking for your personal information that you that it is not certified to be safe, you can't just go ahead putting out your work on that, <laughs> work on that information. And that's why you said that even sometimes 2FA is not even a um, work on a guarantee because mm. sometimes people fail prey to this to uh, these guys creative or skinny uh, schemes in a way that they are able to divulge their information that even sometimes override it to FA. And so yes, yeah, so it's more about being careful not to put that, that information that uh, uh, not giving that information anyhow, your information anyhow. And then last I also say that in a way that we also get to use the internet 
that we want it to be safe for us and then safe for us using it responsibly generally mm. yeah you you ended with what i uh, want to take you up on i know that uh, to 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 define responsibility is is a relative term uh, the government defines responsibility being responsible uh, differently from what the citizens do so that turn issue we can leave it for now and revisit it if we can but now uh, is there something a particular role that the government can play uh, apart from just uh, making the laws to punish those who are uh, cyber criminals, as it were, uh, who are making the internet not to, to be safe. Are they, is there a particular thing the government can do to make sure that our internet is safe uh, for all of us? i give you an instance. There is this talk, I don't know how true it is, that uh, the, the algorithms, that's how they call it maybe, uh, mm -hmm. that they use on TikTok in China is not the same they use uh, in Nigeria. In Nigeria, all what, permit the language, the rubbish that will come to us, is not the same thing in China because whatever comes up, pops up as TikTok in China is educational. People can learn from it and all that. So is there something that the government can also do deliberately to keep our internet clean and safe for not just the adults who want to, who want to use it to learn, but also for the kids who may have access to it? Yeah, so uh, when you mentioned the case of uh, China, it's, it's a bit um, not so straightforward because I would say that on the part of China, what, what, what they do, other people will say that it is uh, the regulation or the guiding of the internet, making it you know, not freely accessible to everybody to be used uh, because they now have to figure out exactly what comes in. And so if that basically works for them, if, it, if it's a general consensus in the country that we want this, we want to go this particular way. We don't want to, uh, we want our internet to be more of educational, uh, what kind of educative materials, uh, content for I mean, that's fine. And um, so when you say in Nigeria, or yes, in Nigeria, what can the government specifically do? You mentioned that apart from making the, uh, the laws, laws. Then the next thing to do is to uh, also implement those laws. But more importantly, it is, um, the regulation or uh, let me say the action that really critically protects citizens data and uh, that's why for a very long time we didn't have the data protection working on commission in nigeria or, or, or uh, act for instance until uh, about two or three years ago that we now had the nigerian data protection um, and act and so this i mean that is a very good way forward to making the internet safe, protecting people's data in the um, work in the first place. And because you find out that within two, three years ago, if you, if you also cast your mind back two, three years ago, the, usually the cases of, you know, uh, loan apps or telling people's information that had never operated or they had not done business with them before, and, uh, you know, getting on some state messages, there were the issues of people losing their money in their recent bank accounts. At the point, it was, it was very common. And then according to, uh, the this Nigerian doctor bought us at that time before it became an ad. Uh, one particular bank had over 16,000 attempts, and over by 80 percent of those uh, attempts to hack them to get data from their uh, working database. We are this successful, but since we've had that, you know, now that there's that legal framework in place and then it's also being implemented, you uh, you uh, also get to find out that there has been a reduction in this kinds of open instances. And so that is the one critical way of protecting data. But first of all, it's also to make the law and then implement um, those, those laws. So we're not talking like, how do we now, when I want to filter the kind of information or the kind of data that people to get, that's my uh, go beyond uh, these democratic norms of allowing uh, work on our creativity, allowing expressions, and there isn't all of this. But if it's a collective, uh, if it, it like if it's a collective agreement or interest of the people to say we want to move this way, we don't want to get this kind of content, we don't want our, our children, our people as students to be exposed to this kind of content, then you can then filter that. It's but beyond that, I think that what government can physically do, make the laws, implement it and protect citizens' data. So what yes. would be your own definition of using the internet responsibly as we go into twenty twenty four, as we're marking this uh, day this year? Yeah, so um, like I would say, using the data responsibly is using it in a harmless way, in a way that is not harmful to you and it's not harmful to others. 
like I said, in the, format, in the work on a fundamental human rights, for instance, the this right to life, they will tell you live and let's live. And so that means that uh, you, don't, you do not, for instance, go online to work on a survivability people because if you yourself find yourself in that situation, you wouldn't like it. You wouldn't want, you wouldn't want people to treat you that way. You can go online and spread misinformation or disinformation about people because you don't want people to also say wrong things about you. In fact, when we're talking about the case of uh, fake news, we uh, also have to understand that uh, information is also critical to nation building, to this building the um, nation, the country that we have. And you see, the fake news is like an umbrella term for both. Uh, misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. And we see a lot of, and we saw a lot of this misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation in the previous election uh, cycle. Yeah. And then why the political enthusiasts use that as a means of propagating their own party or trying to converse well or trying to convince or swing people to vote for their party. What it actually does, you know, when you use internet that way is that you also reduce the, the quality of the citizens' knowledge, because now you are misinforming people, getting the uh, wrong uh, uh, knowledge. So the knowledge that they should have gained, they have missed the opportunity to gain that knowledge. You have rather misinformed them, and so you now have a less sophisticated uh, citizens. And so that way, it's also harmful to work on national development, uh, and then uh, also for you, you, I mean, like you say, what goes around comes around. So if you don't use it safely in a way that it is safer for other people, then it will also be safe for you as well. So responsibly, I mean that if you use it in a way that, you know, basically uh, you, you would want how, like, ideally how you actually want it to be. And then also very important, responsibly is do not put out your information sporadically anyhow on the internet from sources that you are not certain of, from sources that in fact, I think you understand what I'm saying. Don't just yeah. give out your information and always find ways to protect uh, yourself beyond that. We don't read the fine print. We never do. Mm. We just agree. You know, they say, they say give, a, give a black man a book and you can just... Is it only black men? Well, terms and conditions. How many people read terms and conditions? You just you, agree. You just agree because if you don't agree, you don't have it. Do you <laughs> yeah. have alternatives to these things? We don't know. Uh, but uh, I don't know if every year has a theme for this, uh, for celebration of safer internet. Does every year have to have a theme? Yes, every year uh, does this work on a have a have a team. What's yeah. the theme for but this year? For... Hello. What's the theme for this year if it has a theme? Oh yeah, so the uh, theme for this year, um, we're just trying to remember when you're listening, asking the question. But yes, uh, this year actually does have a theme, and um, it, it did not really stick to my head um, mm -hmm. so far. That's so good, fine. Yeah, it does. Anyways, uh, the 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 goal is for us to be yeah. safe on the internet. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, thank you for coming and sharing your valuable contributions for people to be safe. And I know you're from Nguvu Collective, so I'm sure there are ways you guys are trying to to drive a positive change for people to be aware of these things, right? Yes, of course. <clears throat> and so, uh, work on a group of collectives, it's just a collection of um, chain leaders across Nigeria, across Africa, across the world, and uh, in different areas trying to create that uh, change. And so, uh, like myself here, yeah, working in the civic space, working on the internet as well, ensure digital rights are being protected, working on the civic space to ensure that citizens participate. Then we have other people like Alima, who is actually working, creating uh, good change around mental health. And then we also oh, have nice. a work on uh, adult also working around uh, combating female, working on genital mutilations, and a whole lot of others working around education. That's so, yeah, fantastic. So that's why we call ourselves the Ingubu Collective, yes, yes. Uh, because we think that our community to work on nationwide level on there. Oh, yeah. All right, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for um, your commitment to this. Thank you for the change that you're driving, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us today on our program. <coughs> Thank you very much for uh, having me. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so we've been talking about how to keep your community safe. And we've been speaking to Victor Tahemba. Yes, yeah, so we've been talking about a safer Internet day. But yes, we'll go on a short break. And when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. Please stay with us. <laughs>